you ready to talk, you talk. Don't ever let nobody make you be quiet. I ain't named you star by accident. Being a, a father who is not just a father, but an African-American father, I feel like that role had to like tug at your heartstrings and kind of feel surreal. What was it like taking on that role where you had to sit down and tell your children what they might experience when it comes to police officers? They always talk about uh, you not necessarily being ready for a role, but a role being ready you know, for, for you and where you are in your life. I realized that actorially, I could have played that role you know, four or five, you know, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but spiritually, I was not ready. Yeah. And it took, you know, the, the fact that uh, I do have kids and I do ha I have two boys, three and one oh, yeah. now. And being a father changes things. Being a father changes your approach to the work. Uh, it changes your, your, your passion for the material, but it also changes where you are spiritually. Yeah. And it just did that. The hate you give little infants. F's in. everybody. There's a lot of Oscars buzz for you to be nominated for this role mm. as Maverick. What would your reaction be if you were to take home a nomination, let alone a win for it? You know, I'd be over the moon. You know, mm -hmm. I can't, you know, I'd be lying if I said it's not something I had, you know, hadn't dreamed about, you know, uh, or I have. But, but the truth is, it's really always been about the work for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I come from the theater, reared by the work of August Wilson. And so it has just always been about the opportunity to tell good stories yeah. and, and be a part of uh, good narratives. But you can't lie to me and say you don't have a speech prepared yet, Russell. Well, you know, it, it's, I'm working it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's all going. I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? You, you, you're in the shower. You're working on speech. Am I going to think my mama first? Or am I going to think my agent and my wife come first? And who's going to come second? <laughs> and then, you know, I can't forget nobody. You so know, you can't is, forget is, anybody. Do I, is my eighth grade teacher going to be involved? Who, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> you really got to Yeah, no, that, you yeah. do. <laughs> what has been the reaction when you you're out and about and people have, you know, uh, have kind of resonated with Mav. Has yes. people come up to you and had any fulfilling conversations or what's that been like? You know, they have. You know, what I see now, which has been different from other roles, you know, before it was like, oh my gosh, you're Hank from Grimm. It's great. <laughs> Can I get a picture? Hug? But now it's really that grounded. Thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, honestly, just for an example, we were in Chicago and my wife and I were walking down the street and the bus driver honks the horn. It was a brother. You know, <laughs> and he just said, and you just, and that was it. He just, <laughs> you just, and I said, it. okay, I know, you know what I mean? And I knew, I knew that was what that was about and what that meant. Oh, I love, I love hearing that. He was an older gentleman, you know, you could tell he was in his fifties, had the cool little gray with the beard and everything, the bald head. He was oh. like, right on. I said, you know, the subject, right on, brother. Yep, right Gone, on, brother. brother. So. <laughs> My son laid in the cold, in pain for hours. And whoever did this is free. And you worked with uh, Regina King in this one. Talk to me about uh, just soaking up the knowledge for each other. I feel like you both have some really great uh, yeah. advice to pass across the board. Really, I felt um, just an honor to be able to w look at her as a peer, you know, at this point. And so once we sort of, I, I was sort of able to get that sort of that fan aspect out of the way. Mm -hmm. It just became two actors working together. Yeah. And I will never forget, we went out to dinner one night and we're just talking about the characters and the relationship and whatnot. And Regina looked at me and she says, brother, we're going to do this, right? We're going to we're going to go in. Yeah. I said, no, 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 we're going. We, we both, I think, raised the bar for each other. You guys were a wonderful duo, but I know you said that was a really challenging role or one of your most challenging roles. Uh, why playing? Why was it playing a grieving father uh, that for you? Well, again, because, you know, I, at the time, you know, my, my son at the time was uh, just getting ready to turn two. But my wife was also eight months pregnant with our second child. Mm. And so I really, you know, you know, bringing a baby to term is just something that's, you know, it's just it's scary, you know. And so I think I was internalizing that that said that fear that, and that anguish and that anxiety of, you know, is my baby, you know, going to be okay, gonna be gonna, okay yeah. you know. And so I was able to internalize that and use that as part of uh, the fear and the anguish you have as a, grie as a grieving father as, as well. And so it just transported me to a whole different place. And it was, you know, it was a dark place and, and, it, and it was great for that time. Mm -hmm. And again, things don't just happen, they happen just. <laughs> With the holidays coming up, uh, I heard that you were dressed up as Santa Claus before. Can you please describe, you know, your humble beginnings yes, for me? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, you know, when I, when I graduated college, everybody else, uh, I, you know, you looking for hustle jobs. Yeah. And I always said to myself, everybody, a lot of my friends were being waiters and bartenders. And I said, I made a pact with myself. Whatever job I do, whatever hustle job, I, or, you know, job just to sustain me, 
it's going to be a performance. Yeah. You know, I'm an actor, so I have to perform. And so I would, uh, I dressed up for Thanksgiving, I dressed up as a, a pilgrim. Now, it was funny for that. One of the, the anchors, I'll never forget this gentleman on Fox, can't remember his name, but we were out at the seaport in, in New York. And he said, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Pilgrims, and here's Pilgrim Tyrone. Oh, no! <laughs> Stop! And so, you know, it was, it, a, lot, a couple of my friends called me up and said, oh, you're Pilgrim Tyrone oh, now. Oh, now you got a name. I got a name. And then dressed up like, you know, like Santa Claus uh, during, the, you know, the Christmas holidays. And, you know, it was one of that time when cell phones were just coming out, so we were working for, like, Sprint and you know, doing the cell phone jingles and all that good stuff. Yeah. We did that for a couple of years, dressed up like a teddy bear. And yeah. uh, I used to also do telemarketing. Well, what I used to do was I would look at the region that I was calling and different regions, you know, east, west, south. I would change, you know, uh, my delivery, dialect. Yeah. yeah. And so, but the one that always got him is so when you would change it to a, for an English accent or something like that, right? <laughs> so that's what I would do. I'd call up and I'd say, you know, hello, my name is Russell Hornsby. I'm calling up. Would love for you to have a survey with me if you don't mind. And they go, oh, yeah. You were so course. good in this moment. I know you were good as a telemarketer. Oh, no, no, no. Really, it was, I, I must say, it's just sort of one of those things that sort of come naturally, you know? <laughs> All those is performance just to sort of help me get more comfortable being in front of people, comfortable talking to people. And that was always just an entry entry way in, and you do that for a few years, and you're you, when it's time to get on stage or do be in a in a, a movie setting or something like that. I'm ready. You can turn it on That's and off. The, I'm ready. Let's go, baby. Oh my. <laughs> okay, but do you actually respond to telemarketers now that you? Who are you? Who are you? I know you don't. You crazy? I know you don't. <laughs> no, you can tell. You can see what kind of number coming. You know they got slick too. <laughs> They go, hey Russell, what's up? This is Jimmy. Hey Jimmy, what's up? Hey man, you owe us fifteen dollars. Can you want to do the? Oh, click. <laughs>